Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closer Show. As always, Scott Carson, excited to be here with you today. It is a gorgeous day out there. Hopefully, this will hang around till the weekend. But I know many people are always kind of prepping and planning. And if you're listening to this or watching this live or watching the replay on any of our, our YouTube or video or binge channels or listening to this on any of our podcasting platforms or even on our 16 different AM, FM radio stations ranging from Tampa to Long Beach to Pittsburgh to Milwaukee to Vegas to Colorado Springs to Boulder to Lancaster to the Villages. We are just excited to be here and share some information for you with you today. But one of the things I wanted to talk about, I'm kind of titling this episode, Joe Don't Know. Joe Don't Know. And it's kind of, if you remember the the ads of Bo, Bo Knows Football, Bo Knows Baseball, you know, Bo Jackson was one of my, I was one of my, he's one of my favorite players. I got a signed autograph bat from Bo here in the office. It's a little bit different theory of what I'm going to be talking about today. And I think many of us, sometimes it keeps us up at night is what's the future hold for us? What is the future all about? What are we working towards? What's that ultimate end game, everybody, right? Hey, Nate Youngberg, good to see you, buddy, out there. Hey, Stephanie Goodman. Hey, Yachty. Uh, join us live on the Instagram live aspect of things. But what I want you guys to think about a little bit differently, if you're driving somewhere, you may want to pull over, you're sitting there listening to this, I want you to pull out your notebook, your notepad on your phone if you're listening, or pull out a piece of paper. If you're driving, don't do this. Uh, we don't want you to get in a wreck. But I want you to write this number down, okay? Stephanie Goodman, always good to see you as always, dear. See you in a few minutes. <clears throat> I want you to write my cell phone number, 512 585 3810. Once again, that's 512 585 3810. Once again, 512 585 3810. Why am I giving you my cell phone? Okay. Why am I giving you my cell phone? Because I want you to do one thing. I want you to send me a text message with what your number is. What do I mean by your number? And I'll get to that in a second, but I want to at least get the important aspect out of the way of giving my number. And I'll repeat that later on as well. What I'm trying to get at is, thank you, Stephanie Gibbon, for posting it there. If you're watching this on Facebook, thanks for posting it there as well. What I'm trying to get at is all of us are going through life, I think, a lot of times leaving day in, day out. Maybe we look forward to the weekend or towards a vacation, but we don't think long term on things. <clears throat> and I'm going to give you an example. This Every morning when I leave the house, and I don't have a very, very far commute at all. I've only got like a two turn. I mean, it takes me, if the light's green, it takes me a minute to get my office. Two right turns, basically. Right turn out of the, the place where we live, the gated community, and then down the road, not even a mile in my truck. I mean, I could walk to it. I should probably walk to it. I am going to get a golf cart here before too long. I'm just taking a golf cart. Heck, I could just take one of those unicycles and ride to work. But in the 100 degree heat, who wants that? But anyway, I'm trying to get, when I don't have, we haven't gone to the grocery store in, in a couple of days. Usually I will stop. There's a Chevron right here. Pull in, in the, the parking lot. Boom, pull in the Chevron. It's here right across my office. And I get a couple of bananas. Now, why do I get bananas? Well, I like bananas. And I will get a couple. Usually I get like three or four of these things. Now, Steph gets mad because I will grab four at a time and take a whole bundle. And I'll eat on these in the morning. It's like my breakfast. Four bananas every day. The staff always cracks up me when I walk in with bananas. When I get here, usually an hour, I get here at 9 o'clock, one immediately. One at 10, one at 11. Then I usually eat the fourth one right before my trainer shows up. Tom, Thomas, he shows up at noon. I'm usually eating this at like five minutes till the next one. The reason it's my breakfast is my boost for my workout. Now, what do bananas have to do with it? Well, it's either bananas and then I often will grab a Red Bull as well. <clears throat> but I get it for this convenience store here. And every morning I walk in and the manager, Joe, I've gotten to know him pretty well. Great guy. He's been there for 20 years. He's been a manager of this convenience store, this gas station for 20 years. And it's not one of those big ones. It's one of those walk-in. You got like three aisles. You got coolers, basically gas, grab and go, all right? Just an extremely nice guy. Enjoy business with him. We've gotten to visit with him around the holidays and things like that. Sometimes I'll take him in something, <clears throat> surprise him. But when you get to know somebody each day, it's interesting. And this morning was just like a normal conversation. I roll in, grab my bananas. I make fun of the spotted bananas, grab my blueberry Red Bull. We're visiting for a second. He's on the phone. He's on the phone. I got the lady on speaker, something he's dealing with. And then he gets off the phone. And says, yeah, that's my Medi Medicaid. Because he's an older guy. He's like, man, I'm getting old. <clears throat> and I go, really? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, over 20 years ago, 
when we were having all of our managers get together, I guess they have a, a, a meeting or a convention for all the Chevron managers, the store managers. And they were telling me I was going to retire today. I was like, really? Does that mean you're leaving? I was like, congratulations. Where's the champagne? He's like, no, I'm not retiring today. I can't afford to. I can't afford my Medicare. Ba basically what I'd be making in retirement, I wouldn't even pay my rent because I'm getting to be old. My wife wants me to quit work and I can't because we can't afford it. I was like, wow. I said, what would you have done differently if you knew now what you, if you knew then what you would know now? He's like, I would change my life. I would do something different because but I'm too old to learn. I'm too old to start anything new. So I'm going to be here probably another 10, 15 years working as long as it'll have me to hopefully be able to get where I'm in my, you know, in my mid seventies and maybe I make it to 80. I'm like, man, that's not funny. He goes, yeah, you would never know 20 years ago when I started here that I would be doing this still to this day. And he's an, a likable guy. He's always in a good mood, smiling. And I'm like, wow. And I'm walking out. Well, Joe, cheers to retirement. He started laughing because I'll see you tomorrow. I'll have your bananas for you. We walk out and it really struck me with something today. How many of us are going through day-to-day -day life? Day-to-day -life, day -day life. We stop to get gas. We go to the grocery store. We go to the, the bank, the mall, you know, uh, the gym. And people are constantly going through those things. They're going through the motions. They're doing a J-O-B, a, a, as let Ron Legrand, and I have to give him credit for this, the just over broke. Okay? Think about that. How many of us were, are going through life like a zombie, ooh, like a cow, it's a slaughterhouse of being just over broke? Think about that, everybody. I think a lot of us are. I think a tremendous amount of people are through that. This is, buddy, it's just, it's sad to see that. And you know, many of us have other things, but maybe it's not all of us. I get that. It's totally fine. Hey, whether, whether you're doing something else, maybe you're an accountant or maybe you're uh, you know, putting photos together or you're an uh, art or a uh, wine connoisseur or a waiter or whatever like that, think about this. And I think back to my dad, bless his heart, a hard and my work ethic to my father and my mother. <clears throat> and my dad was a local hardware store growing up. He owned it. He built one and built one. Started one when I was in the fourth grade. And from the time, fourth grade till I was senior in high school, my dad had the hardware store. Mom and dad worked in there. I worked in the weekends. Uh, when I was available, working there. I, out. I was like the, the slave labor for all the entrepreneurs out there, whether it was digging ditches, or writing pipe, or working for an electrician, or cutting cutting grass. I got my, I got a great work ethic from my father and building relationships. It helped me out tremendously in my life. But my dad, Unless my mom would have gone back, my mom went back to work. She realized something like 20 years after graduating high school, she turned 40. <clears throat> would have been 15. She realized she had to do something. She realized that she had to do something different because she didn't want, want to learn the hardware store, especially if my dad's already having health issues. Issues with his eyes, diabetic, it's affecting his heart. She went back to school. I have to give credit to my mom back and becoming a nurse your nurse and working to do something different she didn't want to settle for what life had given them so far to go out and make it and i i bring this up because i think it's important to realize this is we're on a treadmill and i think a lot of us are we're on a treadmill running in place running in place back in the paying bills getting by you've got to do some things that are going to change so you don't want to be like joe joe don't know joe didn't know 20 years from now, he'd still be doing the same thing. He still didn't know in 20 years that he wouldn't have that American dream of retirement. The 40, 40 plan doesn't work. Work 40 years, 40 hours a week, retire on 40. So like I said to begin with, what I'd love for you to do is pull out your phone and send me a text. How much do you need to be making? How much do you need to retire? How much are you there? And what's that mean? I'm not looking for all. I need a million and a half. What I love about the note business is that you can, you know, Basically, create your retirement by putting together assets, putting together that we do to get cash flow coming. Like I've been looking at our reports because we're moving 
a chunk of our portfolio right now. You'll be seeing us. If you're on our email system, our email blast, you're seeing it where hey, Mario's we some you know, notes. Are we moving here? Are we doing some more stuff here next we'll begin. But our goal is moving a lot of the non-performing stuff. So we have the performance stuff, we don't increase our profitability by double. And we've been very blessed to have some really great deals, you know. Bar brought five grand to the table, bar brought ten grand to the table to get reinstated on a deal. Those are great chunks, but I'm more interested in the three hundred dollars a month at the bar that brought ten grand to the table. I, I ten grand is great. Pay taxes, it'll pay some investors and stuff. But I want that three hundred dollars a month. The same investor that brought five grand to the table. Hey, I want that two hundred and seventy-five dollars every month. So one of the things that I love to tell, talk to people about is say, look at what you want to accomplish. Look at where you want to be. What do you want? We all want four eighty. We don't want to be like Joe, our buddy Joe. Convenience store guy, bus his butt for 20 years. We want to be that and realize in 20 years, we think we're going to retire on that day. Oh crap, I can't retire unless I want to retire broke. Now, I'm 41. Like, no way you're 41. I'm 41, and I'm looking at what I want to accomplish in the next few years. Now, I, you know, beautiful thing about what we've done. We do a lot of great things. We got some things that would work really well. Um, but the thing is, I've put a plan in place that what we're wanting to do is to take down assets, take down properties, take down notes. Now, is every note going to perform for 30 years? No, it's not the case. Some will get paid off, some will move, some will sell, some are non-performing. But our biggest goal is taking what that number is to live. Taking that, and by my living, I mean not just surviving. I mean living. Is it? That's why I want you to text me. I want you to text me and tell me how far between from where you're at today to where you need to be. There's no wrong answer here. Hey, if you've got five grand coming in a month right now, and you can get 10 grand a month, great. Send to me. Hey, I'm at five, I need to be at 10. How do I get there? All right? Because there's a lot of opportunities still out there today. There's still a lot of opportunities that are available to everybody get rock and roll. And I don't care what it is. Maybe you need to go back to school. Maybe you need to quit doing what you're doing. You want to do something else. Maybe you'll end up finding something or you need to find something that's going to allow for you to retire or to semi-retire. And there's nothing wrong with having a job and staying in I think the biggest caveats is that you people that work their entire life and sit at home to do nothing that they have dying for you. They're dying of work. Right? Dying of boredom and death. That's the big thing. And we see Jeffrey Wolf, the Wolfman. Oh, got a nugget out here for you. You're going to do work every day of your life unless you get money to work for you. Yes, exactly. Our buddy Jeff Watson uh, loves to put this. Hey, get your money going out there and working. Don't let it investing for you. Get every dollar out there working. Pimping out your money. Get it for you to bring money in. And that's whether, A, you're lending other people's money or you're using other people's money to lend against or a lot of great ways. I don't care what beliefs you have. If you have a belief that you can't accomplish something, whether you're right or wrong, you're correct. You know, Henry Ford made that quote popular, whether you're correct or not, you know, whether you, what you believe is correct. If you think you can or can't, you're correct. The human mind is amazing. So here's the thing that you want to look at. Very, very interesting note, investor, look at what assets are dragging you down. If you're paying servicing fees, costs like that. And learn that A, just get rid of that. Get rid of it. Get it sold. Get it wholesaled off. Make some profit and move on to the next one. I, I, you have to look at doing one of the things that we look at doing. Hey, we got some stuff that's been dragging on our portfolio a little bit. Got to kind of reel back in the ring. Yes, I've been traveling quite a bit lately. No, not traveling. Wow. Which is nice. Actually, I am traveling. We're taking a vacation here um, in about two months. It's fine. But what I'm trying to get at is what's going to happen between now and the next two months is going to be I.O. bottoms. should double our profitability on our portfolio in the next six days. That's my plan. Taking our portfolio and what's coming in from portfolio, cash flowing, things like that, should double in the next 60 days. Big goal. If I have the ultimate goal. Here's what my big goal is. And I'm talking with Joel Marcus the other day. He's like, hey, you always had a goal. The day that I met you, the goal is always to have, you know, Couple hundred performing notes that are paying at two hundred dollars a month. That's your split two hundred. Whether it's paying four hundred out, you're splitting, you're getting two hundred from capital. 
that's what our goal has always been. Get that 20 over there. Now, the beautiful thing is we have April 15th coming up, and a lot of you guys think out. Hopefully, you're maxing out your IRAs. That's one thing that we're doing. We're maxing out our IRA contributions for 2018 till April 15th, Monday. Okay? That's tax day, but you put away, sock away a lot of money in that. And that money can go to work for you in commercials and go to working for you buying some smaller value assets. You can lend it out in a mezzanine like a second lien to somebody who's doing a quick rehab on some things. There's a lot of ways to put your money to work, have it work for you in a popular way. The thing is, if you keep waiting to take action, you keep waiting to do something, you keep waiting for that job to kick in and, and start paying or wait for that up. You know, it's funny, I was watching a movie last night, probably a waste, it was a waste an hour and a half. Uh, waiting to, or so I'm still waiting. Oh, it's horrible. The manager there, it, it, it really hit home as well. It's not a lot, you know, I'm a convenience store guy, 20 plus years, at the point today was supposed to be his retirement day. Talking about, and the, and the movie, and the manager's like, oh, I knew it would be different when I went from Washington, uh, cooking. To I knew it'd be different when I got to trainer. I knew it'd be different when I got to assistant manager. I knew it'd be different when I got to store manager. Oh, it's going to be different when I get to regional manager or district manager. No, it's not. Not gonna be any different. If you're relying on somebody else to give you a paycheck, they boss. You are their indentured servitude to them. Okay. If you're waiting on somebody else to give you a paycheck versus you going out and controlling that yourself, you struggle. That is a bad thing for everybody. Now the thing is, so you gotta realize you gotta be smart about it. You gotta be taking action out there. What I mean by taking action. Hey, maybe you got to get some training. Maybe you got to make some more offers. If you're in real estate investing, like most of our listeners are, most of our followers are, it means you need to be making more offers. I got an email from a lady today. Hey, if you have anything in my backyard, I love that you're sending out these emails on these deals you're moving. If anything in my backyard, I'd love to apply. And I'm just laughing. I'm like, yeah, if, you have, if I have anything in your backyard, I'm going to sell it to you. I'm going to sell it to you for cheap. I'm going to move it myself. And you've been sitting there trying to grow your small fifteen thousand dollar IRA, and there's, you know, but not doing anything, not doing anything. Bouncing from job to job, got to take action. Happen. Uh, Ed Squire here. Me too. What now? On our Instagram says something because I did this biz before the two thousand eight crash. And back in. <laughs> okay. Hey, glad to have you, Ed. Glad to help out any way we can for anybody. Our listeners, our watchers, all of us out there. We've got so many great resources. For you to take advantage of out there. If you are interested, you can also be still on your phone, pull out your phone, text the word notes to 72,000. Okay. Text the word to 72,000. Start looking at where you want to be, looking at where you want to go. Our buddy Dan Deppin, uh, like he just jumped in here on the Facebook Live. Dan did a really great job of leaving his six figure job. Okay. I'm planning out what he needed. He bought 15, 20 assets, got a bunch of bought some performing stuff in his IRAs and planned it out and was able to go take advantage of it and do it. You all can do the same thing too. He was leaving a six figure job. Now, yes, it's helped. Life is still working. And based on what they make and what they live on, them, um, she can provide them plus their kids in case he does have a slow. Dan's on a great job of moving his business along to get rock and rolling, to get rock and taking action. Right? Taking action makes it happen. And so, like I say before, if you look at your living, not what you're just surviving on. Look at that number. Okay? Look at this number. And I often do a webinar called 250K in, in 12 months, or 250K in 2019. So I started off using the first note night in America each year is talking about that game plan. And that game plan is still staying, staying very much the same. Okay, what you need to be making, not to survive, but to truly live. Truly live, okay. If you any, if you're surviving on five grand, that ten grand coming in, there are some simple things you can do to increase that cash flow to that point. Now we're not talking about oh, I need a million bucks, you know, returning me ten grand, I mean, ten uh, percent return, so I can live on hundred grand a year. No, no, no. I like to reverse engineer. If you're going to be the bank behind distressed debt, you don't have to wait till you've got two million saved. You can start making cash. Flow. Now, really rock it. All right, ten grand. Okay, ten grand cash flow. Divide that by two hundred and fifty a month cash flow. You need ten grand a month. 
there's 40 deals that you need to close between now and whenever your retirement date is. Maybe it's not 12 months, maybe 24 months, maybe it's 36 months. Those are the goals that you need to work towards really some big things later on in life. Now, a lot of people, though, they get bogged down. Like, oh, I need 40 deals. I, I can't do that. All you have to do is start with a deal. Start with one. One deal is not that difficult to do. Okay? One deal can be done. 20 grand, 30 grand. There's plenty of people, other people with money out there who can do some amazing things. Glad to lend you the money. You got a great deal. There's a lot available people out there in the I mean, this next, uh, I'm speaking Tuesday the 26th uh, at Quest IRA here in Austin, Texas, actually, for the Trillion Dollar Investment Mixer. And I'll be talking about some of the great things that, we, things that you should be doing for your, you know, mark mind. Because a lot of people are scared. Oh my God, where do I begin? Hey, you know what you do? Start by getting educated. Start by learning that you want to start learning. Hey, is your market a good market? It's in Texas, where I live, not necessarily the greatest market. That scare me well, necessarily did it paralyze you no a lot of people are paralyzed because a lot of people can't get out of their own head to get outside of their own market get out of their backyard i understand that i've been there you have maybe the best thing to do is go take an afternoon drive take a weekend go somewhere new. go meet with your local real estate investment club go meet your local real estate investors ask them to coffee ask them to go talk to people hey what are you doing now and what would you be doing if it's something now that you know what you know, what would you do? Would you be like Joe still doing the same thing? Or would you start doing something different? And that's the thing that a lot of people struggle with is not knowing, oh, I don't know the future. Well, I get not knowing the future. I get it. You can't predict the future. You can't predict the it's going to turn south. You can't predict the market is going to rebound up. You can't predict the thing. You, all you can do is predict and take control of your own thing. That's the thing I, I, I want to harp on with you guys. Hey, if you feel like you're running in place, get the hell off the treadmill. If you feel like you're struggling, find you struggling to do something different, hey, talk to someone. Pick up the phone, text me. Glad to jump on a call with any of our listeners, okay? Any of our Note Nation followers out there. Go to our Facebook page, follow us online. You can look at Scott Carson on Facebook. You can find me just by anyone from the Note List Show page on Instagram, Facebook. Follow us. Shoot us a message. We want to hear our audience. We want to hear from you guys. Not only our existing students that are struggling, but new people. Hey, where do I begin? What do I do? I was glad to take those questions, those phone calls. Like, I'll shoot you a link. Schedule 5, 10, 15. Okay? So, this is a big thing out there. We do, you know, as I say, this episode is entitled Joe for a couple of reasons. We got some people listening to us later on. Or, you know, like I talked about beforehand, I encourage you to go back and listen to this. But walking into the convenience store this morning, when I come in basically three, four times a week, pick up bananas and a Red Bull, bananas and bull at the b in the morning. And guys worked there for 20 years. It's like, yeah, today was supposed to be my retirement day. I'm going to be able to retire. And if he, you know, you remember sitting back 20 years ago talking about that. That's what I want you to think about. Where were you 20 years ago? Years ago, that would have been 20 years ago, but 1999, I was in between. I was actually all, I was taking a year off from school, right? No, I was, I was actually back in school. I was back um, just starting at Texas State University, taking a year off to figure what I wanted to do, and was back on to school for, for business. I knew I needed to take some time off, I figure out what I want to do. I had to grow up a little bit, all right? And was back in school. And thanks. And where am I going to be 20 years from now? 20 years from now, I know I'm going to be somewhere tropical the entire time for the most part. And stuff, and I'll be bouncing around from island to island or moving around a little bit. But we have our, our place for our, our, our four legged furry kids. Um, and, and doing that, enjoying that aspect of things. As we were talking last night, we don't have the normal the kids and years of that. And that's great. You know, Totally fine. We're we're completely happy. Um, but that's the thing is, what, what are we planning for? What are we looking for? We're, we're constantly planning, and that's one of the big things I think everybody struggles. With. You get so sucked into the day in day out routine, day in day out, day in day out, 
in your routine becomes this really a mind becomes the your own prison. It's a prison with no bar. It's a prison in your head when it comes down to it. How many of us have had prisons in our head before? God knows everything. Can. Okay. I know you work. Thanks, but I appreciate it. <clears throat> we have all had prisons in our head before. Maybe it's the job that we think we're gonna promotion. I saw a buddy of mine, no investor. He's like, oh, I've been working at this job for seven, eight years now. I'm so excited. I enjoy my bosses. Thank you for allowing me to do this. I'm like, really? You're thanking your bosses for giving you a job. That's great. But I'm, 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 I'm physically inside me. I'm crying for the guy. The guy did so much amazing things. Now he's gotten sucked back into this prison of having a job. And, oh yeah, it's got benefits. It's got 401k. I'm like, hey, okay, great. You know, if you put as much energy into your side hustle that you were getting started, that you wouldn't be sitting here talking about this. You were talking a year ago about leaving. Now you've gotten sucked back in. You're having to deal with this. Oh, I can't do my stuff. But I really enjoy it. I've got to go back to work and deal with my tape of the steak. I'm just like, oh, please. Oh, I want to do this for him. Or more so, I'm like, run. You know, I love the guy. And I just like, ugh, killing me, small, killing me, because it's just a, it's just not fun to see. It's not what I want from people. It's not what I want to see from people that we're close with. I want people to accomplish their goals. I think anybody can accomplish anything that they set their mind to, because the fact our brain is one of the, the most powerful tools. And if you are struggling with something or you can overcome something, such a great way to do some things. I was joking with Thomas, my trainer, this morning. He's also one of the things I was talking with was like, hey, what do you want to accomplish? He's like, I always get ready to move in a new house here. You know, I'm like, it's awesome. He's working through some things. He's left his job working for a corporate. He's making more money, but working half as hard doing his own thing. And I'm like, that's awesome, man. And he's like, I got to start planning for even some bigger things. I want to do some bigger things. And that's what we all want. Steph's got some bigger things she wants to do with Animal Rescue. And the thing I look at is, look, if you can carve out, if things are important to you, if it's important to your retirement, to start saving, if it's important to doing things, then you'll find a way to do it. If it's not important, if you're not in pain, if you're not outside, if you're not in an uncomfortable zone, you're going to sit there. It's like sitting in bed. When you ever get that morning, like laying in bed, like, oh, I just want to stay. Everything feels so good. It's cold outside, but I'm so warm. I'm all tucked into my cocoon. You know, you know, you got to get up. You know, you got to go work. You know, you got to get some stuff done. It's time to basically say, hey, I got to break the cycle. I got to get up. I get rock and rolling because the world is moving on, whether you're on that train or not. And that's what I want you guys to do. I don't want you to be like Joe. I don't want you don't, to don't know. Joe don't know when he's going to retire. Joe doesn't know when he's going to accomplish something. Doesn't know, doesn't have any goals set out for him. You can accomplish anything you want if you'll just set specific goals. Like I said before, Feel free to, uh, well, my number, 512-585-3810. It's 512-585-3810. I give you my cell phone number because I want you to text me. I don't care when you're listening to this or watching this. If it's weeks after this goes live, that's okay. Shoot me a text message. Tell me, hey, here's what I have making right now. Here's where I want to get to. Here's what I want to accomplish. And if you want to share what your ultimate goal is, hey, I don't want to live in Austin. I want to move to the Bahamas or I want to move to the Caribbean. Or I want to move and travel nonstop. That's fine. Figure that out. I have friends that have taken three and like six month cruises. <laughs> My buddy Mark Music, uh, you may know him from uh, Transformation, uh, Total Transformation. Buddy of mine, he's been a long time, one of the best uh, ventrilo uh, ventriloquists, hypnotists out there in, li in life transformation. Just an absolutely awesome guy. He's got an event going on today. We had uh, on a previous episode with Michael Silvers on talking about that. And, and Mark is helping him out. And Michael works with him on the well, that stuff. But uh, Mark was talking about he wanted a six month cruise for this cruise line. And they're performing like twice a week. He's like, I'm so sick and tired of cruises. It's going all over the place. I'm like, really? Did you get out and have some fun? He goes, yeah, we had to have some fun, but I want my own place. I want my room. It's not bad at all to do that. I'm like, okay, great. At the same time, there was an article that came out that talked about this guy. Okay. 
about this older gentleman who was retiring, but wasn't going to move into the, the assisted living facility. He was moving into the local uh, Holiday Inn because he was going to travel across the United States. There's 1,100 Holiday Inns, and for basically 30 bucks a night, he can stay there cheaper. They got happy hour for free. They got a free breakfast. They got an on-site gym. They got a pool for the grandkids. They got places all across the country to go to because anybody can call the police or the ambulance when I die. I'm sure I wouldn't be the first person to die in NBC Suites. I started laughing. He was like, yeah, he's, I'm going to be saving like $100 a day by doing that. I can put that money to something else. I was like, man, that's a smart thing there. Great. He's still mobile, still agile. You can shuffle in, shuffle out. You can see the doctor wherever he goes. That's thinking outside the box. That guy knows how he wants to do it. He's stretching out. Now, for those of you that are at that point where you're actually, oh, the door's right here. That light at the end of the tunnel is bright in your face. You're like, oh, God, what am I going to do? got to start doing something different. You've got to start taking action. And I don't care if it's buying property or selling on eBay, buying notes, whatever it might be. Maybe you need to develop software. Maybe you need to go to the Goodwill and buy stuff cheap there and sell it online for more. That's completely fine. Whatever your thing is, it's your thing. But the best thing you can do is start to look at building residual income, building one or two or three things out there that you can do differently than what you've done before to help you get that, get that number. So like I said, hey, I got five grand coming in a month. I need to make 10 grand. How do I get there? Well, with notes, well, I would look at it and say that's anywhere from 10 to 20 deals you need to do. That means you're making somewhere between 100 and 200 offers because basically most of us, especially in the note space, here's the note closer show. If you're buying distressed debt or notes, you're probably going to make 10 offers to get one deal accepted or get one deal closed. Yeah, if you make 10 offers, you may get more than one deal accepted. But through due diligence and breaking it down, you got to go from there. There are things that you can do. It's not as difficult. I'll give you guys an example. It's not nearly as difficult uh, as most. A lot of people say, oh, you can't buy direct from notes. That's a bunch of horse. Okay. You can buy direct from banks. You can buy from hedge funds. It's been happening for years. It's going to keep happening. Even with the upturn and the downturn, there's always going to be stuff selling assets. Banks are looking to move. The days of you needing five to $10 million to get started in real estate are way, way gone, all right? Way, way gone for everybody. Start marketing. Start talking to people. Getting out to your local club. Start talking. Dropping emails out to asset managers. But listen to a previous episode. We just talked about how to find assets. And we just finished up with the three parts. There's finding, funding, flipping, non-performing notes. How to find the assets, how to raise capital, and how to flip them, different exit strategies available. Listen to those past last three episodes. Great starting point for you to get started out there. What, what's the next phase? Eh, maybe you need to join us for some education. Check out our YouTube channel. Maybe you need to check out the note, uh, noteblueprint.com, our note buying blueprint, noteblueprint.com. Maybe you need to check that out. It's our online home study. Great place where people go to learn some stuff. But the thing you have to realize, start learning, start following yourself, start aligning yourself. Find an accountability partner, something to hold you accountable and maybe even help you hold your hand through some things. That's the thing. I think Steph posted on something on here on our Instagram account here. Um, seeing uh, Dan next month at the Mastermind too. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Yes, we have our next note Mastermind taking place the 26th, 27th, 28th of April. It's the 26th to the 28th of April here in Austin, Texas. We're looking to have a lot of fun there. And if you're on the fence and you'd like to learn more about it, drop me, like I say, drop me a text, drop me an email at scott at weclosenotes.com. Go online, connect with me. Glad to schedule some time with you, see if it might be a fit for you. We do have a couple sneak peek seats for people that maybe want to come out and check it out for the first time. Um, glad to have you. It's, the seats are good. Tickets are good for you and a spouse or partner. Come on, that money's totally transferable towards or payable towards your, uh, you know, if you want to pay for a, our, our fast track or your note mastermind, join the group. It's that thousand bucks is totally transferable to that. Uh, it's basically a seat deposit and you go from there. You can do it once or twice. But well, I think we've got four or five sneak peek seats available for anyone that's interested. But we're excited. It's one of the best weekends of the year. The three weekends we have our note mastermind are just, we're just excited. It's our hanging with our note family. It's hanging with people like the Laura Blancs, the Jeff Wolfs, the Dan Deppens, uh, the Stephanie Goodmans, uh, the Chris Savennies, the Gail Greenbergs, you know, the Robbie Woods. There's a lot of great people that we love hanging out with that have come through our program and, and really enjoy spending time with people out there. The Patty Pads. Um, I could go on and on and on of all the people that have come through the Dale Corpuses, the Matthew Johnsons. 
um, the Lisa Benangs. There's so many great people that are doing such great things. Pam Wilson, Charles Wilson, all right, Karen Burnson, just so many people that we've had the pleasure of hanging, hanging with and helping them really overcome their obstacles and get on their path. And don't be wrong, it doesn't mean people don't get sidetracked from time to time. We all go through that. We all have that shiny object syndrome that we need to pull out the gun and shoot the squirrels. It just happens. But the thing is, is if you know what your focus is, if you know what that number needs to be, and you set some goals and you plan your day, you plan your week, you plan your months around those things, those squirrels will eventually start flaking off. You won't see, you know, Sammy the squirrel showing up at your door every day to keep you distracted. You won't see those things because you'll be focused and goal-oriented to get things. And everybody gets distracted. God knows I've gotten distracted in the past, okay? We get excited about some things, okay? Um, <clears throat> there's so many different things that can distract you. And honestly, uh, that happens a lot. People get distracted quite a bit. The thing you keep in mind is, is to own up to it and then get back on course, get back on If you have not attended a webinar, if not gone to a real estate club meeting, if you're not showing up to things, okay? Get online, get started, start doing something to help you get rocking and rolling. That's one of the most important things I could tell each and every one of you out there. If you're struggling to find something, if you want to go back to school, hey, go to the local community college, take some classes. If you want to do something like that, do take action. You still have the availability to do that. I right, jump on Linda or the Can Academy that are online, lynda.com for cheap or Can Academy is free. Start learning, start taking classes, start bettering yourself. Spend that 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. chasing your dreams and not somebody else's. All right. So important because that's what Joe did. As I said before, that's what Joe did. He was there for 20 years helping somebody else build his dream. They're not building his, building somebody else's dream. That's one question I asked him. I said, Joe, you've been here 20 years. Is your uh, boss still just doing the same thing? And he goes, No, my boss lives in a much bigger house. He's not renting it like I rent my place. I'm like, well, you've helped establish that, make them big. What would you do differently now? I would because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. But I'm forced to be here now. Really? Okay. That's your take. That's your take. Whether you think you're right or wrong, you're you're correct. But many of you out there are literally, you are your biggest issue. You are what's holding you back. It's not doing anything else. If you want to save millions of dollars or donate millions of charity, start donating a dollar, start talking to people. Look to save 50 grand versus a hundred grand. Look to start something, take one offer, make one deal. Okay. Do the things that you need to do and start it. It all starts with a drop in the bucket. It starts with a glass. It starts, a, and a lot of us look at things. Oh, I need to fill the whole bucket. I can't do that. Yeah. You can't do that now, but you can do a little bit. And that little bit will grow and that little bit you'll get better at what you do. It's the same thing with marketing. Okay. It's the same thing with marketing. Start doing videos, start making offers, start posting things online, start going to social media, start con making, connecting an audience. Like I, I, I made a joke with somebody the other day, like I've got just under 16,000 connections on LinkedIn. If you're not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Love to. How do you get from, how did I go from 6,000 to 16,000? It's just focusing on that a little bit at a time. Things at night, taking five, 10 minutes at night to connect with people. While I'm sitting there watching TV, I do this every night. So it's like, what are you doing on your phone? Well, I'm just connecting with people, just adding to my database. I'm just trying to connect and build my audience so that when I have assets available, I can move assets. When I have assets that I need to move, I can reach out on LinkedIn and post them there or post them to my social media accounts to get them moved. Some people are, are just totally blown away. Um, like the, yesterday, I posted an asset in, uh, oh my gosh, I have one in, uh, oh, in Jackson, Michigan, the day before I posted something in Francis, Oklahoma. I'm gonna post an asset or two here when I wrap up with this recording, different parts of the country. And I got people coming from all over. I got people like, oh my gosh, I saw your deal. I wanna go buy the house, like, right, make an offer. People from San Diego looking to buy an asset in Oklahoma. People from uh, Houston, Texas looking to buy this stuff in Indiana. You just have to get the word out. You don't let them say no. But most of us, before we ever take any action, before we take any action, we let those demons crawl into our head. We let those demons crawl. Oh, I can't do that. I'm not smart enough to do that. Okay? God darn it. People don't like me. 
You know, oh, I can't post that. I couldn't buy that. I couldn't move that ass. Why not? Yeah, you can. Get off your ass and take action to do it. Get off your butt and make a posting. Get off your butt and pull a photo. Get off your butt, jump on and Google the address. You can do so much more than you can. And I was just recently, I was very lucky enough to be at PodFest recently um, and have a, a breakout session with my buddy Tom Hazard for 30 minutes. It was all talking about how to raise, how we uh, took my podcast and a close show from basically zero to 150,000 downloads in the first 12 months. And especially a niche podcast, okay? Very niche podcast. Not one of these broad things like general real estate or broad audiences like Gary Vaynerchuk has. I'm a very niche audience, you know? I'm fine with that. I'll get, if I get a couple hundred views on, if I get 300 views on a Facebook Live video, great. If I get 1,000 downloads per episode, hey, I'm happy. We're, we're rocking because we're serving our niche. We're really serving the 1,000 people that listen, the 1,000 people that listen out there. Yeah, do we want a bigger you note know, tribe? Of course we do. Well, that's why we do what we do to get the word out and we're doing across the board. But what I'm trying to get at is there are so many people looking for different things. You can jump on and post to LinkedIn. There's LinkedIn groups with half a million plus people. You can jump on meetup.com and find investment clubs that you can post to their discussion board with thousands of people. Heck, yesterday I found one in, in, uh, in Ann Arbor, a group which is like 50 miles away from the property in Jackson. I posted it there. I had three people reach out to me today, say, hey, I wanna, I wanna buy that asset. I want to drive by that asset. I'm like, great. That's awesome. And we got some great people join us. So we got uh, Bedurko and then Cuba, uh, Cuba Mixon. Hey, Cuba, I love what you're posting. Cigar fan as well, brother. Good to see you. Always your cigar and coffee. So it's great seeing people. That's the beautiful thing about doing this thing right now. Some of you guys are watching me from countries away. Some of you are watching me and listening to me from states away. Some of you are, I mean, are going to be listening to this episode across 16 radio stations. Some of you are going to be listening to this episode across 75 different countries out there. And so that's why I'm trying to say this, everybody. If you really aren't happy with where you're at, take the time, pull out your cell phone, boom, 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 type in my cell phone number, 512-585-3810, 512-585-3810. Shoot me a text message. That's my direct cell phone, okay? And tell me, hey, where you're at and where you want to go. I'm not happy with where I'm at. I'm not close to retirement. I'm, I'm running this treadmill. How can I get things rock and rolling better for me? How can I learn more? I'm glad to spend time with you. One of the most valuable things that I've been doing the last couple of weeks is as people are opting into our website or a different specific list is sending out a personal, you know, text message video to them. Hey, thanks for opting in. Love to visit with you. I'm going to shoot you an email with a link. People are like, oh my gosh, Scott Cars is taking time. I'm just a normal guy, but those are little simple actions. It takes me five, 10 minutes to do. Posted out there. How many of you could do that to people? How many of that? How many of you could really do something good like that and share? Hey, just wanted to let you know I've got I'm thinking about you. Hey, I saw that you opted in. Or hey, I might have a deal in your neck of the woods. Okay, everybody could do that. It's just a matter of whether we choose not to, or we rather choose something else. Like a lot of people, I, I make the joke. I, I walked in this afternoon talking about how I was talking to people at the front desk here at my office, and uh, many people don't. It's like March Madness is going on right now, right? It's, it's a big NCAA basketball tournament here in the United States. 64, 68 teams actually battling out for a couple of weeks from now to be crowned national, you know, NCAA champion. Well, this weekend, so many people are excited about the basketball games. They're sitting home watching basketball, and there's nothing wrong with that being a fan. But if that's what your whole goal is, is to go from sporting event to sporting event to sporting event, eek. I'm a big sports fan, but I want my to enjoyable it. That's not my life, though. Me wrong. I'm a big Cowboys fan. Go Cowboys. I'm a big San Francisco Giants fan, big Astros fan as well. I'm excited for the start of regular season here in a week. Okay. Start of Major League Baseball season. I'm excited about that. But the thing you have to realize, too, if you're so worried about, A, staying home and your brackets and your fantasy leagues, and that's your big thing. I got a brother in law that's like that. That's all that he focuses on. Oh, I'm a. You know, when he's not coaching, he's all about his fantasy leagues. And I'm like, Ugh, why don't you learn something more valuable than what if somebody caught a touchdown or ran for a thousand yards? Look, I have a fantasy league. I get that. I'm in, in one or two fantasy groups. I spend like five, 10 minutes a week. Whoopie do. Grand playing. It's something I can talk crap with my buddies about or part of it. But you have to focus on something. If you're not at a point where you need to be or where you want to be, 
it's time to put away those childish toys. It's time to start adding things to your schedule that's going to actually have an impact to what you're doing. Have an impact to that final goal. With me, I've looked at our schedule. I've looked at what we do, where I travel to, and making some changes to our schedules to help us impact that more. I'm turned down some speaking of the agent. I, I'm supposed to be in San Diego. We turned that down. So now I'm going to stay. Bought a ticket to an event. We're staying home. We have to focus on some things. Got to get rid of the squirrels. Got to kill the squirrels, everybody. So I can spend more time later on doing what I want to do. I can need to put the investment. On. I need to plant those trees now so that in five years, in 10 years, they're providing shade and fruit to me that I can sit back and relax and do whatever heck I want. I can be sitting out having a good Cahiba or a good Rocky Patel cigar, good, good glass of bourbon or scotch, sitting out with my feet up somewhere tropical I need to be, somewhere in my backyard, do what I want to when I want to, because that's the point. We all are hard workers. Everybody likes to work. Everybody's, I'm not saying anybody on here is not a hard worker at all, but it's all about what are you working towards that's more important than you taking time off. I had a really good buddy of mine that I'm probably going to see next weekend who lives to do all the other things. He lives for the weekends, and he struggles during the week. He lives for the weekends, but he's str he struggles constantly. And he's at that point, too, in his life, 41. He's looking at doing the same thing for the next 10, 20, 30 years because he hasn't put anything away. All his stuff is all about going out and living it up for the weekend. You have to be smarter than that. You have to be more prepared to tackle life because we're not all going to be here. You're not all going to have your perfect health. That's part of the reason I go to the gym. I try to go to the gym every day. That's why I have my trainer come to it's, it's money in my financial bank for my health. So I enjoy life better. It's, it's money in the bank each day. I make a deposit every time I'm working out, whether it's with Thomas or I'm at the 24 hour riding the bike, which I'll be at this weekend a little bit. It's a deposit in the bank. And so what I want you to look at too, is look at your schedule. Look at what you're doing. Look at your expenses, the things you're doing. What are things that are, 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 are pulling money out of your deposit or stuff that you're putting in that are valuable? I love one thing that Steph does. Steph's been going through, like last weekend, she was like, okay, are you using this? I'm like, oh, nope, not using it anymore. Let's kill it. Are you using this? Nope, let's kill it. Are you using this? No, let's kill it. Because that's, that's cycling away $100 a month or $100 a year. Even the little things, take them off. Look at your schedule because I guarantee you, you can all free up money. You can all free up time to go find what you need to do. It doesn't have to be 40 hours a week. Maybe it's five hours a week. Maybe it's 10 hours a week. Maybe it's just something that you need to do to do it, because I don't care what it is. We've all basically got from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. If you work from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m., guess what? You've got from 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. for your side hustle. Be smart about what you're doing. Be smart about what eats up your time. Be very protective of what and who you give your time to. Your time is the only thing that you're able to control. If you're giving away eight hours a day to a J-O-B, that's fine. Nothing wrong with it. If you enjoy it and love it, by all means, great. If it is really paying for your way, great. That's awesome. That's the route you want to go, great. But what happens if tomorrow something changes? Like our friends that work for the government, they found out a couple of months ago they were laid off for two months, three months. Oh, yeah, they'll get their money, their payback. But I see an uptick in defaults because of, A, that aspect. Because they didn't have money set aside. They didn't put any money away. And the best thing you can do, <laughs> best thing you can do if you want to do something big, go out and uh, download uh, my buddy, George Anton's book, The Banker's Code. It's a great book. I'd also go download or go to your local half-price book, something like that, and buy uh, the Richest Man in Babylon, phenomenal book, talks about putting money away. Pay your, learn to pay yourself first, because if Joe had learned to pay himself first, he wouldn't be sitting here today extending his retirement. He wouldn't be sitting here this day instead of not celebrating, being depressed about his retirement day 20 years later. He'd be doing a whole different tone. And the thing you have to look at is figure out what those numbers are. That's why I tell you. Throw this out there one more. Hey, Marvin, hey, Cuban. See other people join us. Just take the time, like I said beforehand, pull out your phone. Last chance here before we wrap up this episode. Shoot me a text message, 
512-585-3810. Once again, it's my cell phone. It's my personal cell phone, 512-585-3810. Tell me where you're at, what that number is, where you want to be. If you, you don't even know what that number wants to be, figure out double what you're at right now. If you had double coming in what you had right now, would you be living a little bit differently? Would you be taking a little bit more time? Would you be having a little bit more fun? I think the answer to that for everybody is yes. So we'll figure out what your gross is, what you want to double that number because you would live a lot better, a lot happier doing that. And the thing is, if your number is five grand right now and you could double it to 10 grand, it means you're getting 120 grand a year. Then what you need to do is put that number up somewhere where you can see it every day it's in front of you, whether it's on your calendar or it's on your mirror in the bathroom or by the, uh, the door in front of the toilet, whatever it may be. Put that number somewhere where you see it and start working the numbers backwards. And that's one of the things that I love doing is, hey, if you need 10 grand and you're basically buying assets that are bringing in 250 a month in cash flow on your side, great. That's basically 40 to hit 10 grand a month. And everybody that I know is capable of closing on 40 deals in the first 12 months or the next, or, the, or 24 months, or even if it takes you 36 months. If you're closing on one deal a month on average. Everybody's capable of doing that. It's a matter of whether you're going to or you won't. Or you're going to chase squirrels, try to find something to get rich quick, or try to run from one thing to another, like unfortunately a lot of people are doing. Like there's this big event going on right now in Dallas. Right now, Gary Vaynerchuk's coming. Great, that's awesome. Gary Vayner, very motivational speaker. Well, don't you want to? Don't you want to come? I'm like, no, I don't want to go. Why? Is this going to be a pitch fest? I don't need to pitch on something else. I don't be pitched on something else. I don't be pitched on wholesaling or pitched on fixing flipping. I know what my my nugget is. I know what my goal and dreams look like. Just got to work it. I have a plan. I just need to work your plan. I need to work my plan. Sorry. Many of you have a plan and maybe involve somebody else. Maybe you need to figure out what your plan needs to be for you and your family. Start working that. So, like I said, everybody, take the opportunity. Don't sit here and be like my buddy Joe. Joe don't know retirement. You can look back 20 years from now. Are you on the path where you want to be in five years, 10 years from now? If you don't, then that's sad. You have to take the opportunity, start putting things into place, whether it's non-performing notes, whether it's first, seconds, partials, REOs, rentals, whatever that is, start building that path to do it, taking time, taking action. Get off of somebody else's plan for you and get on your own, and you'll feel a whole lot better and a lot happier about life, and you'll be driven to accomplish big things and go out there and make something happen. So like I said, everybody, go take action. Don't hesitate. Feel free to shoot me a text message, 512-585-3810. Once again, 512-585-3810. Be glad to visit with you. Shoot me, hey, where you're at now, where you want to go. Like I said, I'll be glad to help out. Where are you at now, where you want to go, we can schedule a phone call and go from there. But otherwise, go out, make something happen. Take some action today. Get off that treadmill and just spin it in place and do something different if you're unhappy with life. If you're happy, hey, great, don't change anything. But if you are unhappy, like I know most people are, it's time to change. And the only person that can handle that, can make those changes, is the person looking back in the mirror. So go do something, take some action, and we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye.